got camera yeah. and old monitor. <laughs> All right, it is six o'clock, it looks like to me, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I think we have a presentation from uh, Cindy Williams and Diesel Post about the uh, uh, Chief of County Rec Plan update. Sure, I'll just uh, introduce Cindy. Um, this is uh, a long time coming. We gave you an update a few months ago on the progress that we we're making on this countywide recreation management plan. And uh, we're here with another update. Uh, I will be maybe not, I'm going to stick to script, so I'm just going to turn it over to Cindy and as not necessarily my usual, I'm going to be reading my lines when the time comes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Diesel. You can do it, Diesel. Well, greetings, everybody. <laughs> so with that, Thanks for the Cindy, end. thank you. Um, I'm Cindy Williams. I'm with Envision Chaffee County, and I'll be presenting tonight with Diesel. And also, I think we have on the line uh, Jim Pitts, who's the Salida District Ranger, and Jamin Grigg, who's the CPW Wildlife Biologist. If those two could just confirm that they're on and they have sound, that would be awesome. I am on, Cindy. This is Jim. Yep. Hey, Jim. I'm on as well. This is Jamin. Great. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, guys. So what we wanted to do, um, PT and Town Council, is to share with you elements of the Chafee County Rec Plan. First, with a video. We have about a six-minute video we're going to share that sums it up nicely. And then we have uh, about eight slides that we'll walk through in about eight minutes that just shares with you key elements of the plan. And big picture, what, what we're looking for tonight from you is just to answer your questions and to get any initial input. After that, we'll be looking for full feedback on the plan by the 4th of June. We're gonna roll that into the plan and then we'll come back to you with a plan in June that's complete and we'll ask you to be signatories of the plan, you along with BV and Pontius Springs Town Councils and the Chaffee County Board of Commissioners um, signifying that you all uh, support the plan and that you're happy to help us implement it together. So that's the idea. So with that, um, I'm gonna go to the video and then we'll go to the presentation. Summer is coming and everyone is getting outside to hike, bike and boat in Chafee County. Even before the pandemic, recreation was growing at a quick pace. The Chafee Recreation Council has been working with public land managers and the community to deliver a recreation management plan this year. We want to hear your thoughts about the plan's elements that address your concerns about managing recreation now and into the future. With the onset of COVID-19, the world was told to go outside to get remote and what better place to do that than Chief County. The town of Buena Vista and Salida saw record use of both their outside or wild spaces, but also their urban landscapes. We were inundated with trash in our trash can, with hashtag van life users, with people who took CDC and their local public health order seriously, and they learned how to travel self-contained. So the only thing they need is the place to dump trash and waste. Our urban parks and bathrooms became those way stations. We really needed to step up our game to keep our parks and our public spaces clean and we need more of these way stations, more places for people to dump their trash, more places for people to recharge in town that is public and open. We look forward to the opportunity to have a plan for addressing the needs that we're seeing, not only in our rural open space, but also in our more urban centers. In addition to meeting in-town infrastructure needs, the TV Rec Plan aims to have high quality, low impact camping opportunities across public lands to stem the rapid expansion in the number and size of sites in areas like Four Mile and Chavago. The U.S. Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management will start their public processes this year to see where we might convert areas to designated dispersed camping, close illegal sites, or provide more developed campgrounds. Managed camping keeps people in the right areas, allows us to install metal fire rings for safer campfires. Community concentration zones allow us to concentrate recreation in areas where it enables access and focuses recreation in areas where we won't have as much impact on the land and wildlife. And this will support our trail system by allowing them to be accessed from in town and support our river experiences by giving more access to the river corridor. 
At the same time, focusing recreation on these valley bottom assets helps give our public lands and wildlife a break, especially during the sensitive winter months. And providing recreation in town gives a place for people to move when we need to really expect recreation on public lands. We will get more quotes on the ground from the chief of rec rangers who will monitor, clean up, and enforce rules to keep public lands healthy and fun to use. Professional rangers work on all lands and enable volunteers to help through the new GV Rec Adopters program. Similar to the Adopt Trail program, volunteers sign up to monitor and clean up recreation zones. They support the rangers using the campsite collector app to record and report the site issues on their cell phones and fix them as directed. Some folks have learned multiple recreation ethics in the outdoors. Some really kind of difficult to understand. Recent assessments found that the gal. Of trash and human waste. Yeah, the audio is really, really bad here. The video. Well, four service yeah, staff. The video is nice. So, Cindy, we might need to pause that. I, this is, uh, it sounds like a bunch of droids from yeah, Star Wars. It's like you're um, about 10,000 feet underwater. Um, so, uh, obviously, it's it's a YouTube video streaming from her screen that she's trying to. Um, I have not seen this video yet, so I was actually very excited to see it. Um, Cindy, I think we're going to need to pause it and maybe send this off, um, unfortunately. Send us a link and we'll, we'll check it out. Okay. So we get the, I think we get the gist. It's busy. You guys yes. don't have this sound or it's all garbled. Is that the deal? Yeah, it sounded like aliens. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. Future note, send the link. Um, to the other councils. Yeah, thanks, Diesel. Okay, well, we got a good uh, recap of it that we'll that we'll tee up here. Then, um, this is coming from the Chafee Rec Council, which is all the characters that you see on the left side of this slide, uh, with a lot of consultation with community members um, and organizations, which you see on the right side. As I mentioned, we'll be asking you guys for uh, input on the plan for now, and then next month, um, if you're willing to be signatories of the plan. And with that, I think we've passed to you, Jim, to talk about the uh, camping management plan, which is uh, one key element of the overall rec plan. Yeah, hopefully, as you saw in the video, or at least got the, the gist of it, that we are working together to deliver a high quality, low impact camping. As a key element, the Forest Service and the BLM are working with CPW on an all land camping plan to consider solutions proposed by residents and visitors, including designated campsites in popular areas, closing illegal sites, containing others, and developing alternatives such as a fee-based campground that have parking, trash disposal, and restrooms, kind of that conventional campground that we're all used to. The community is also very engaged in this effort and these discussions. They're supporting solutions to add to camping with appropriate facilities on private or even city lands. The BLM has initiated their planning process and is currently in a public scoping period. The Forest Service will do this We'll open a public scoping period in June um, with a decision to come late winter or early next spring. As we work on the camping plan, we're also taking immediate action. Cindy, can you go to the next slide? So user behaviors are part of the challenge. And to address those behaviors, we will get more boots on the ground through the Chafee Rec Rangers who will monitor, clean up, and enforce the rules. The Ch Chafee Rec Rangers also enable volunteers to help through the Chafee Rec Adopters. It's stewards, the, the Rec Adopters are stewards who sign up to monitor and clean up recreation zones. It's a program that's modeled after our Adopt-A-Trail program. Chafee Front County Fire Protection is also developing into a partnership with Chafee Fire, the Forest Service, and the BLM uh, to help educate users about safe campfires. And I'm also happy to report and share with you all that the Forest Service has hired and filled our district law enforcement officer position, and they're going to be based here out of Salida and covering the Salida Ranger District. 
Yeah, but you're just building on that. All right. To, priori to prioritize critical infrastructure needs, we created the Chafee Rec Infrastructure Tool to gather opportunities and to rate them with metrics tied to protecting the environment, sustaining experiences, and economic benefit. The Rec Plan Infrastructure List includes 95 opportunities entered by agencies, towns, and the community. The Rec Council identified the top 25 using the ratings and considered balanced distribution geographically and by user type. The top 25 are shown in the map and include restrooms, trails, projects to protect natural resources, and more. The idea to work together across all county agent, uh, entities to get the top 25 in motion by 2023. The idea is to work together to get there by 2023. Seven of the top priority projects are in Salida. Uh, Salida projects rated as top plan priorities include restrooms at Spiral Drive and Marvin Park, a dogway station at Vandeveer, a safe route and sidewalk on Illinois Street from Scott Street to the school, or a trail connecting CR 107 and CR 104. These are a toss up for the community input, for community input on which uh, will be the most important. Popular projects, including the soaking pools and mountain bike park, which will also help relie relieve use on public lands. We go to Jamin on uh, community concentration zones. Thanks, Cindy. Um, yeah, so one of the key uh, rec plan elements is this idea of con concentrating uh, new recreation development in two uh, community concentration zones uh, shown here on the map in red, uh, one in and around BV and the other um, in and around Salida and, and Punch of Springs. Uh, the idea here is to add assets popular with residents and visitors, such as connected trails and river parks and to place them uh, where they have the most benefit to local businesses uh, while also having the least impact to wildlife and natural resources. In terms of the least impact, in the Chafee Rec survey, we learned the number one priority of visitors and residents is to manage recreation to protect wildlife populations. Uh, we think um, such responsible recreation can be part of Chafee's brand. Uh, we have completed extensive wildlife habitat modeling as part of the rec planning process. Um, the map here shows where the most wildlife species are most sensitive to recreation pressure. The purple and red zones on the map represent the most critical wildlife habitat in Chafee County. If we want to maintain our wildlife populations, it's important that we say no to more recreational development in these areas. Um, meanwhile, in the green zones, we have places where perhaps we can focus new recreational development uh, while having the least impact to wildlife populations. Um, including the two community concentration zones, again in green. Wildlife are especially at risk from recreation pressure when they have young um, of the year. And the map on the left shows the most important production areas where as a community, we can consider voluntary seasonal closures during production time periods. So we roll all of the elements of the plan together. Um, infrastructure, additional management capacity. I, I think we didn't get as far in the video um, to where it talked about funding, but the per visitor, as as we've experienced 4 million visitors a year, and that has been growing by 14% a year, and of course more during the pandemic. What we saw from 20 to 16 to 2019 is a, about a 40% decrease in per visitor funding from the federal land management agencies combined with CPW and also even on a per visitor basis, a decrease in town budgets, although y'all did a lot, we're a lot closer to keeping up. So if we do everything in this plan, including the infrastructure, um, the top priorities and the next priorities with the idea that we update those each year and we get management and maintenance funding back up to where it was in 2016, then all of that together cost about 20 million bucks. The idea, um, we, we get that that's a lot of money, so we're thinking of all sources of funds to make the plan a success. We've initiated a thing called the Chafee Rec Fund. 
uh, which is a fund where folks will be able to donate. Uh, we may be able to capture business contributions or, uh, you know, at the point of sales contributions and crowdsource funding, those sorts of things. Um, that fund is held at Chaffee County Community Foundation and the funds will be deployed by the Chaffee Rec Council. And then we're also working on uh, adding capacity so that we can do collaborative grants. So for example, on the infrastructure, we might have a grant for projects in Salida and BB and Poncha. Um, and we're looking for uh, looking to put in place about a quarter of a time resource to help write those sorts of grants. So that as a community, as a county, we can be more successful on pulling more funds into Chafee from all sources. And then of course, um, with, with Jim and others, we're working to encourage added federal and state funds. Uh, but we know this funding piece is difficult. So we'll be looking at all opportunities, um, including voluntary fees or you know fees at campgrounds and all, all of those sorts of things. Um, so with that, just as a recap for you, uh, we'll share with you the video. Sorry, that didn't work well. Um, we'll share with you the full plan on Friday and the ask will be, um, for you to help us create a shared rec culture that protects the natural resources here in Chaffee County that everybody loves and comes for, and to keep our public lands clean, fun, and, and wild is really what we're after. And with that, I think, Aaron, you can maybe let me stop sharing and go back to faces on the screen. And what we'd love to do is just take your, uh, take your questions and any feedback that you have sort of off, off of the, the start with the experts that are on the phone, especially Jim and Jamin. All right, great, thanks. And actually Drew sent us that link, so uh, everyone should have that uh, link in their email at this point, I believe. Um, any questions from anybody or comments? You know, I've, I see the two bathrooms that you've identified and it seemed to me since 1970 that we needed a bathroom in Riverside Park. So why did that not make the plan? So <clears throat> I basically went through our master plan and listed everything that our master plan called for. And then we rated them out and things came to the top or, or not. Mm -hmm. um, the Centennial and Marvin Park bathrooms were specifically called out in our master plan. Bathrooms in general were the top priority, but those were the two that were specifically called out. So I, I could certainly see your point point that would that would be a very a, a great asset um so yeah I, I note taken but otherwise i i love it i mean because i think you're addressing the problems that we all see people trashing the wilderness anybody anything else so i had one quick question i guess this is great it's good to have a plan is this uh are parts of this going to be implementable this summer i mean we're already seeing uh our trails overrun and our campsites overrun and it's happening absolutely i wonder jim if you want to talk about a bit about rec rangers and, and adopters or uh, and or the fire patrol all of which i think will happen this summer yeah, those are definitely in the motion. So like our JP Rec Rangers program, we've got a couple of additional seasonals that we're able to hire and pick up. Um, and they're going to be on, well, they're hired right now. So they'll be able to do a little bit of training and then they'll be able to hit the ground. And then we've also are working with JP uh, County Fire on this prevention patrol idea and engaging with them about how to help us uh, share that fire prevention message especially around that in that urban interface area. And that's gonna be uh, implemented this, this season. And our, we've got a, a really strong, I think, I think we're really fortunate in the fact that we've got a very strong cadre of volunteers. And so even starting last year, we started a, a campsite program where individuals could um, basically adopt a campsite. And we're gonna expand that program a little bit more this year. It's actually, it's, we've got, a a lot of energy around you know the management of and we've got a lot of support around the management of our dispersed camping uh, this next step of really working through a camping management plan and that being in coordination with the blm i think next summer you'll even see more 
management efforts as well as additional regulation to help uh, you know guide folks uh, where to recreate and um, and how to do it responsibly. Great. Um. Um, starting starting this year, you may have seen the Chaffee County Visitors Bureau has engaged um, with us and they have the Chaffee Visitors Pledge and they've worked to include some leave no trace guidance into the Chaffee County Visitors Guide that's out this summer. They're also going to be working to share educational materials with visitors before they come, um, which will dovetail nicely. And then there's also a number of uh, campsites and, and kind of critical issues that are on the, the contain and manage list which I think the rec rangers will be helping with uh, this summer as well. Um, so yeah, there, there'll be lots happening in the field this summer. Okay. And speaking of that, Cindy, are you also gonna put some materials at the Salida Chamber of Commerce? Cause we do get a lot of people stopping there for information as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a fabulous idea. We'll make sure we do that. They'll have the visitor's guide with that expanded uh, sort of messages on ethics, but we'll uh, check in with uh, Lori and the, and the team and see what else we might be able to do as well. Okay. It, and then I guess I had a couple other real quick things. Um, the uh, the governor clarified some stuff on uh, OHV use, and is there uh, any coordination to uh, enforce that in the county this summer? Say there's, um, I'll let Jim speak to it maybe on the agency law enforcement side. One of the infrastructure, one of the 25 infrastructure plans um, includes a project to add signage on Chaffee County public roads that are not open to OHVs to make sure that OHVs are, are aware of that. Um, we're also engaged with Central Colorado Mountain Riders, um, CORE and others, and they're working on additional education programs to reach out to the OHV user community and try to manage behaviors. Um, certainly OHVs did, did show up in the Chafee County Rec Survey as a, I guess, kind of a, a pain point, you would say, or an issue of concern. And then I don't know, Jim, if, if there's anything you wanna add regarding the law enforcement officer that you're gonna be putting on the ground here soon. Yeah, and actually the Forest Service and then Colorado Parks and Wildlife, we have a pretty unique partnership when it comes to OHV. We have an OHV crew it's a four person crew, two or four service employees, two are state employees. And their whole kind of mission throughout the summer is to ride trails, make contacts with, with people, uh, you know, inform them about the rules, but also enforce the rules. And so those changes and some of the, the things that are being discussed, um, that, that's gonna be our primary conduit with the public and that user group is to have you know those folks out doing their patrols and they do some trail work as well as opening of uh, trails like from uh, if a tree comes over and, and falls across the trail, they do that type of stuff too. But their primary mission is really about enforcement, um, looking at the, the sticker program that the state has, you know, making sure all the OHVs are permitted and that sort of thing too. So, you know, and that's a, actually four folks that cover uh, all the Salida district, a little bit of the Leadville district as well. Um, and then with our law enforcement officer, they're gonna be, uh, they're currently on the district, but they're going through some training. And uh, by July, they'll be through their training and they'll be on the, you know, out on the trails, out on the roads. Um, they do have a, an ATV and he even has a motorcycle. I'm not sure he's even ridden the motorcycle yet, but uh, there'll be another uh, conduit to get the message out and, and for enforcement. Okay. I got one more, if nobody else has anything. Um, so I know over in uh, Crested Butte, they virtually eliminated dispersed camping. Um, I certainly hope we're not too far down, you know, we're not on that road, I would hope, but maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I can talk about that. I've, we've talked with the Gunnison quite a bit. Uh, Matt McCombs and I coordinate quite frequently uh, just across the forest boundary there. And the idea with our camping management plan is to be a little more holistic. You know, managing a dispersed camping, uh, it's tied to motorized access. It's tied to you know, the in, impacts from the resource from you know, making big bonfire type campfires or having multiple campfires. And then you just 
there's the trash issue and there's the human waste issue. That's another piece that we don't really talk about. Um, so all of those things kind of combine into our camping management plan and that holistic approach, looking at like the, the entire district, looking at parts of Leadville, and then doing a coordinated effort with the BLM. Right, we're hoping that we have more options in our toolbox than like you say, to just close it in places. Um, there'll be definitely some ideas that come from the public through our public scoping process that may identify areas for like day use. And, um, and maybe that's an appropriate thing, especially when we look at like those um, in urban interface zones or areas where we've got a lot of private property and we've had some issues, you know, folks, they're thinking they're camping on public lands and actually they're camping on private land. So some of those things that we do need to address and we're like say, that holistic approach on a kind of more of that public lands approach and a unified coordination between us and the BLM. Hopefully we've got some really good ideas and in, input from the public that either all the discussions from this plan and the development of this plan will go into our analysis. And then we've got uh, opportunities to manage that dispersed camping. There definitely be areas that'll be designated and you have to camp in those locations. And then other areas that'll still be open, you can select a spot and get your tent there. So, but it is really tied to that motorized access, motorized camping support, not that dispersed, not like the wilderness camping or um, if you're out backpacking. Okay, excellent. Anybody else have any questions? I got just a quick one. Yeah, Mark. Uh, I guess I've been always uh, more of a primitive camper, uh, but I wonder about for all these RVs coming up, do we have enough um, dump station capacity? I, and I don't know if that's addressed. I'm sure it is, um, but I just wonder, uh, you know, we lost the one by the pool and then I don't know if, if the one out by the uh, forest service building is still active or not. No, I can, I can share that that, that one was pulled out. Um, and the simple answer is no, but the other side of that question, I think, is is yes, in that it's a, there's a long line um, when you're up in Poncha, especially on the weekends. And uh, that's definitely something that could be looked at, uh, potentially expanded. I can tell you, you know, from our perspective, um, we, we really supported that site down at the Forest Service office. It was easy access, easy to get into, easy to, to get out of. Uh, the public knew where it was, you know, it's, it was pretty simple to explain. Um, we even had a few folks at the office that became pros at how do you operate and use it? And, that, and that's okay. Um, we were there to help and support the public, but definitely some opportunity to expand and, and add capacity there would be a real benefit, I do believe, especially with the increased use. Um, you know, what we're seeing on, on the public lands and what some of the ideas around requiring people to remove their human waste with them or have a in a you know a contained fashion um that it's a leave no trace concept it, it may not be too popular but it's going to be something that we are going to be discussing and so those additional opportunities to dispose of that properly i think would definitely be helpful and Lisa, i don't know from your perspective you might have something that you want to add I'll just add <clears throat> the term way station was used very carefully for Marvin Park and Vandeveer because without your consultation, we were not going to put an RV dump anywhere, um, being that we pulled one out. So um, way station, I mean, at our two sides of town, it, it's got the space um, that Marvin has the infrastructure already for something like that. But um, it, it was not in the master plan. There was there there is a gateway park, but does that include an RV dump station? Does the information and the data that we're finding through this process lead us to that conclusion? Um, <clears throat> that that would be something that I would be coming to you guys, um, to to Drew and staff to to discuss, um, and then to you guys to present someday. And just to maybe one last thing to add on to that. Um, David Lady and I met with the. Uh, the developers of the RV park that's going on out by the sale barn, and they are actually looking at putting in a, a station out there for dumping and also to do water filling. So because of the, the use in that, in that area or what they're planning to use it for with RVs, there's a natural connection there to try to do the same for people that are coming in and out 
it would be a fee-based system, just, you know, it, it, and it would actually be run by uh, a private company uh, because they're going to have to have staffers out there and things like that. So it's actually an optimal uh, opportunity for us if we can get there through, through negotiations and things like that. So hopefully there will be something coming actually sooner rather than later on that. Yeah, great. All right. I mean, for sure, when we looked at the infrastructure plan, we had the way stations diesel mentioned, but the idea of added capacity in Chafee County for RV dumping and, and for trash um, pickup as well, rated extremely, extremely highly, as you guys might, might expect. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Any other questions, thoughts? All right. Great. Well, I think you're on the right track. I... I would assume if you're going out for grants and that sort of thing, you may be back asking us for money at some point. Yeah, it will be um, what, what we'd like to do, um, PT and, and council, is to come back to you in June uh, with the final version of the plan, um, pre-send it beforehand, and again, ask you to be signatories of the plan. And the idea of that, it's, it's similar to what the fire protection districts did with the Chafee County wildfire plan last year that the three towns and the board of county commissioners would be signatories just saying that you all uh that we're all going to work together to to help implement it together and to use it to prioritize and help us um create a new i guess a a new state in chafee county um so i just want to check in and make sure that you that you guys are, are lined up for that we don't want to show up and have you not not ready to engage in that conversation. Um, again, looking for your comments by the 4th. We'd incorporate those and then we'd come back in your June session with a plan and, and ask you to endorse it or adopt it, I guess you'd say. All right. Sounds good. Great. Well, good work and I look forward to seeing what the final version is. Thank you. Great. Thanks all for the time, Jamin. Jim, thanks for making your time to be here and yeah. cheers to you. Diesel, take care. Thanks a lot, you guys. All right, let's talk about the Southeast Salida development activity. There's a lot going on over there, huh? Yes, there is. Um, evening, Mayor Council. Uh, I thought I'd just put together something here uh, briefly for you all, considering the amount of work that is going on down in our Southeast uh, portion of the city. Just catch everybody up to date. Um, most of you are pretty familiar with a lot of the land use applications and, and uh, projects down that way as they have come across your desks and the dice um, over the last several months. Um, if we go, let's see, we'll see if this actually works. All right, hey, how about that? Um, so I've got eight projects here to just give a brief overview of kind of starting in the north and going down to the southern edge of the city. Um, the first one is uh, really the most recent one, actually, that you all have seen was the Cherry Grove Major Subdivision, um, which is off of Scott Street, just a little bit to the north of River Ridge. Uh, and this one is a seven lot subdivision. They, uh, they've been starting to do some <clears throat> site work out there, uh, a little bit of um, the, the subdivision improvement agreement actually will be uh, coming in front of you all here pretty soon. Um, I think this particular uh, project is, is uh, going to be just the lots for sale, so they're not going to actually be developing it themselves. Uh, so that one's had going on. Then River Ridge, which got approved a year and a half ago or so, I believe it was. Um, there's uh, pretty much all the infrastructure is in over there, and there's one unit that's in the process of being constructed, which you can see uh, just... Oh, that's right, can't see it on this one, but anyways, um, there to the right, uh, we are um, expecting the building permit application for the uh, eight unit uh, affordable housing complex out there real soon. I think they're gonna be submitting for foundational permits um, first and then uh, doing the rest in a little bit, but then we've been hearing uh, a lot of inquiries recently about other building permits, people as they're buying up the lots out there, um, a variety of housing types, single family, duplexes, triplexes, and potentially some others. Um, let's see. The next one is the Dutch Run subdivision, which is immediately to the east 
um, of that. I do believe the lots have gone up for sale. I don't, we haven't really heard anything specific, uh, a couple inquiries here or there, but um, that one's largely quiet at the moment. Uh, two rivers, of course, uh, their plan division, uh, plan development and subdivision um, on the northern side is is uh, largely built out with with residential housing at this point. Um, a bunch of you might know that uh, the Mojo's Eatery, I do think that opened up mm -hmm. just this past week or so, uh, real recently anyways. Um, and then they've got some additional building permit applications in for um, the rest of the commercial area, we just got some actually end of the last week for some more mixed use projects. So residential up top, commercial down below. So that commercial area is really starting to build out. <clears throat> um, pretty soon that's going to be a fully built out functional, functional area um, in, in not a very long period of time, mind you. Um, Two Rivers South Side is immediately on the other side of the South Arc. Uh, they are starting to do a little bit of grading work. Um, the subdivision plat was recently approved at the uh, just beginning of this year. Um, not too much else to report in regards to that, but I do anticipate seeing uh, some movement on, on that in the not too distant future. Confluent Park got a lot going on out there right now. Um, so the building permits for the 48 unit LIHTC project were actually issued on Friday. Um, so they are gonna start up with that. They've got much of the infrastructure in, in place uh, to begin construction of those apartments. There's a little bit of a map showing what it's anticipated to look like in the southeast corner of the entire development. The, the two buildings, 24 units each, plus a, a clubhouse um, sort of in, in the same area. Um, working through the land dedication details for the park, which will be immediately to the north of that, as well as easement issues for the community garden uh, on that site. And we would anticipate there might be uh, additional um, building permits we start to see for the rest of the site, um, which is a variety of commercial in the southwest corner of it, um, potentially multifamily along Highway 50, and then a lot more single family in the northern section as it abuts Two Rivers South Side. Uh, these are a little schematic of the of the buildings um, down in the bottom of this particular screen, and and that's actually a photo just from uh, this past week so a lot going on out there for sure and that whole area is going to look very different uh probably even by the end of the year uh the 6906 llc otherwise known as the magpie apartments those are are uh, humming along they've got much of that particular um uh neighborhood a little pocket neighborhood built out at this point um with a bunch of the duplexes and uh, I think they're hoping to have it fully completed by the end of this summer and start renting out uh, those particular units. And then the RV resort, which uh, Drew mentioned a little earlier, uh, they continue to do some work on it. We got the easement um, for the trail that goes along the river um, adjacent to the project. Uh, that will eventually connect into the rest of the trail system north and hopefully south of their cross CR 102. Um, they continue to, to work on the infrastructure out there. So, uh, yeah, quite a bit. In, in this one, I might mention also there'll be a, uh, the plan is for 20 affordable rate spaces to be available um, to folks. Um, and I think that number is somewhere around $330 a month to be able to bring, you know, your RV or whatever it may be onto the site. So quite a bit going on. Um, I, last thing I might mention, um, in, in regards to Salida crossings, which still kind of uh, still fits within that Southeast uh, Salida area. Um, of course, off of highway 50, uh, contrary to some rumors that I've heard out there, that one's actually still alive. Um, and uh, in fact, they tore down some of the fencing that they had out there just this past week or two. 
um, with some plans to do a little bit of site work, removing the asphalt. And uh, last I heard from the developer, they're looking at bringing in some or, or uh, submitting for foundational permits, perhaps by the end of the summer, oh. uh, with the hope of doing some development at the end of the year or beginning of next year. So that one's actually still alive. They're just kind of working through the details of financing. They did come in with an administrative review um, earlier this spring on some smaller changes, uh, but largely the, the project is is the same as you last saw it. So, yeah, cool. yeah. a lot going on down there. Yeah, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. yeah. I'm just blown away by, I mean, how busy things are. Um, and I'm just wondering, you know, I mean, resource-wise, um, how are you guys keeping up with this? Uh, with a lot of late nights. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're, we're stretched pretty thin. There's no question. And uh, it does not look like it's going to stop anytime real soon. Um, as I mentioned in our department report, we have eclipsed the 100 building permit uh, mark already, which is the first time that we have ever uh, had more than 100 building permits prior to July. Uh, and we did that at the very beginning of May. So things have been humming right along. Uh, of course, Christy and Catherine have been just banging things out. They've been doing a fantastic job. Catherine, uh, we were just talking about it today. She's been able to step in immediately and, and really contribute. Uh, but we all realize that uh, this is going to probably continue for a while, at least for the foreseeable future, and we probably will need some additional help. Okay. Thank you. It's good to know. Right. Anything else? All right. Well, keep up the good work. We appreciate everything you guys are doing over there. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. The community policing contingency funding. Assuming that would be Chief Johnson. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Just wanted to come before you this evening just to discuss, um, like Bill was saying, we're busy. <laughs> Town's uh, definitely um, packed with people, both moving here and um, people that are just visiting. And being the hub of the county, we get to service all those people when they come to Chafee County. Um, you probably saw the report, um, the calls for service are remaining high. Um, this year so far, we're at 2,223 calls for service at the end of April. That's 40% uh, year to date. April was extremely high compared to last year because of the COVID. Last year, kind of everybody shut down in April and didn't know what to do. So our calls for service dipped a little bit, but uh, we rebounded this year with a 77% increase over April of last year. Um, kind of, we put that uh, person in the budget last year at the end of the year for a contingency in case the trend was showing um, or continued to show what it was showing at the time. We ended the year last year at 25%, 40% up this year. There's no end in sight. We're getting ready to go into the busy time of year, which I anticipate is going to continue at the same rate that we've had for March and April. If we get to that number, we're probably looking around 9,000 calls for service. We've never been over 7,000 in Salida. So, um, <laughs> I'm kind of coming to you just to, one, talk about the need for the extra position. Um, we've got uh, a female that's about to give birth. She's going to be out for a few months. I've got a guy on injured re uh, reserve right now for an indefinite amount of time with a back injury. Um, so we're running a little thin, throw in uh, time off and trainings. Um, something has to give. So either we uh, cut back on training, which in this day and age isn't a good thing to do, um, or we've got to look at adding some personnel. Um, there is a challenge with uh, movement in the community in the country with adding non-certified personnel and uh, doing more of the community service approach. And we have switched to that. If you've noticed, we've switched from code enforcement to community service officers. With that, they're taking a load off the patrolmen. They're doing some of the calls for service that aren't police related. Um, we could definitely use more of that, but the immediate need is just filling the street um, for the safety and the protection of the citizens and guests 
and just being at a minimum staffing level. So that's the request for now. As we move forward, we'll definitely evaluate and probably come back next time with a different approach to add somebody that's not a certified officer. Um, we had a position posted in the uh, Mountain Mail, our Facebook page, city website, all over the country to replace an officer that left in December and five and a half months and got zero post-certified applicants to apply. So that's another challenge we're facing. Um, however, we did get somebody local who luckily owns a house already in Salida um, who's interested and in, um, that would be the candidate that would be sent to the academy mm -hmm. to fill that position. However, we're looking at May of 2022 until that person's actually out on the street and on their own. So it's kind of not an immediate fix adding the position, but at least gets us something to look forward to and the guys can know, hey, I only have to work all this extra overtime for another 10, 12 months. So that'll help a little bit. But uh, I want to see if you got any questions, concerns, comments. Um, definitely uh, in a tight spot right now. Well, we did want to note too that uh, one of the community service officers is actually, uh, all, we're also going to send them to the academy as well. So one of, one of the things that's going on here is that we're actually going to have two candidates that go to the academy. Granted, they won't be available until May, but hopefully that you know, gets us in a path where we're starting to get some auxiliary folks that are in there to offset when we do have people that are out on maternity leave or we have people that are out with injuries because that that is a fairly often occurrence, the injury part um, in this particular line of work. So uh, I think that that's one of the things that Russ and I have talked extensively about is that we really need to get some additional resources there because we're, we're unable to keep up, especially if we have one or two members that, uh, that do go down. So... Uh, that's part of what this whole discussion is about as well. Yeah, and doing that, uh, this the sit-in, the, the gentleman that was on as a community uh, service officer for the past year, we hired him with the intent of eventually sending him to a police academy once a spot came available. And we're, I actually got off the phone today with a gal that went to high school here who did our summer, uh, or not our summer, but our school um, kind of co-op program that we have. And she graduates in December, and I just floated an idea past her today. Um, she's going to intern with us this summer, and then for her uh, college credit, I threw it by her about coming to work for us in December when she graduates, and taking that position for the community resource officer, and then having her as the plan to send the next person to the academy as we move forward. And she sounds pretty interested, so I think that program might be something that's good for us in the future. Um, it gives us time to evaluate people to see if they're a good fit to become a full-time officer. And uh, it gives them some experience in the community service realm as well. Right. Russ, is there anything that CMC does around criminal justice that could help us? Yeah, we're actually, um, the police academy we're planning on sending them to is CMC's academy up in Glenwood. Um, and since we're in district, we get quite a reduction on the rate of that. Mm. Right. The situation in Poncho Springs, is that working out that the sheriff department is really taking over those calls? Or how many calls do you have to serve there these days? Um, I mean, we still go out there, but uh, we've pretty much put it on the sheriff's department to be the initial uh, responder. We had an incident this past week where they didn't have anybody close and we had the gentleman driving around town. We had four different crime scenes from the gentleman that started in Salida, and our guys went out there and made contact with him because we got another report. So there is times like that where we end up in Poncha Springs, um, but that was following up on our local cases here. But we're trying as much as possible to only go out there as a safety resource when they're shorthanded and not getting in the middle of anything. So. We drastically reduced it, but we still do end up out there a few times. Thank you. Great. Any other questions? Just, uh, just a comment. I mean, I, I wanted to just say thanks. I mean, I know it's never an easy job what you guys do. And in this last year with COVID and this national stuff that's been going on, I just want to say thanks because um, I know it hasn't been easy. And I uh, really appreciate you keeping the community safe. Yeah, thanks. We appreciate that. And when do we get to meet Sarge? Uh, so Sarge is back. You've probably seen on the Facebook page. Um, he's already made a pretty big impact on a few cases. 
Um, we are going to plan on um, in the coming council meetings having you guys out at the multi-use facility and then running through a demonstration. Oh, good. Um, he just did a community meet and greet at uh, Touch a Truck. And then next week he'll be meeting the entire kindergarten class. They're doing some book on dogs that smell, so it's perfect for him. <laughs> so he's getting, he's making the rounds. Um, we'll try to set it up uh, for a work session where you can see him actually track somebody and then see how he works and, and finds all the drugs. I know a lot of dogs that smell. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else real quick? And Drew, we did put that, that money for that extra officer is in the budget. So that's something that can just be done, right? That is correct. And what we're, what we're really looking to do is just be flexible with this money yeah. so that we can get people trained up because there is an additional cost to that. There's some additional mm -hmm. overtime that comes with that too, obviously. So we'll, we'll kind of spread it around a little bit, try to be creative, um, but also just know that we we've got to fill some gaps here because right. and get into a place where we have folks that are trained up and ready to go because it's not like you can just go pluck a law enforcement officer off the street as we've seen in the last five months yeah. where we really only lucked out the last week that the job posting was open in terms of getting a candidate that would be ready to go but it's um it, again they're still a year out yeah right well it sounds like we have some uh some pressing personnel needs at the city. And mm -hmm. luckily, I think we're probably financially at a point where we can take a look and see if that's uh, going to be doable and sustainable. And, um, and I think that's part of growth. As we grow, these needs become, they grow as well. And we have to reinvest those resources into making sure we're providing the services that the citizens need. And Russ, I'm just curious. I know that we've had a problem with attracting officers and we've had to send several people to school. Is your sense that this is becoming a nationwide problem or is it specific to Chaffee County where we just have a worker shortage? No, it's it, every police chief or sheriff that I talk to is facing the same problems. It's not a very, very attractive job right now. Right. It's a lot of national attention, a lot of negativity. Um, caused by things cops are doing and from media attention so it goes both ways um, and it's just kids coming out of school aren't going hey i want to be a police officer these days so it's it's challenging um cost of living here is really a challenge mm -hmm. trying to like our uh, community service guy i uh, posted in the community page trying to find him a rental because his rental's up and like 75 percent of his take home goes to rental so it's really, um, it's a challenge. And all of us in the city, regardless of what position, are facing that. Um, the businesses are facing that. So it's just something the whole town's going to have to pull together on. For sure. And I think one of the things that we're seeing, too, is that even at, even pay, even if you paid considerably more, you know, a 25% increase in pay, you're not catching up to the cost of housing. Right. So that's something that we are evaluating internally to see how we can assist going forward, whether that's, Again, through creative agreements with partners, nonprofit partners like JP Housing Trust or uh, Habitat for Humanity, or uh, even going out and, and talking with some of our uh, the developers around town, just saying, "Hey, can we can we get in on a unit? Can we rent one from you? Can we can we buy one from you?" And I think we're kind of at that place now where we need to start doing that because we've got jobs that are tough to fill already, and then we compound them with not not even having the supply available to to our workforce. So we're we're definitely in a tough spot right now, but we'll, we'll get creative. Great. All right. Any other Any, questions? Anything else? All right. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Russ. Tell your, guy, tell, tell your team thanks as well. Yeah. All right. Um, that's all on the agenda. I did want to bring up um, tomorrow morning we will be sitting with the community roundtable and uh, trying to um, update the policy um, around the COVID policy based around the governor's latest orders and what the CDC is saying. Um, so we will know more after that meeting tomorrow, but I think there's a fair chance that we will be able to actually see each other's faces tomorrow, <laughs> um, which would be great, make my job a whole lot easier if I can <laughs> see what you guys are up to. <laughs> um, 
Although I will have to, I will have to reteach myself to be a little more stoic with my expressions. I suspect, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so there's something to look forward to to uh, um, in the near future. Um, does sound reasonable. Mm -hmm. Right. That being said, I don't know if we have anything else to talk about unless you, somebody has something they want to bring up. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get out of here and get rested up for a big meeting tomorrow. <laughs>